Joining us now is Wisconsin's former Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes. He is now a senior fellow at People for the American Way. Welcome, welcome. Well, cool. well, Thanks so well, much for having me in the corner. Well, LG to LG. This hey, is man. how we do it. Oh, thank you both for inviting me to your does black Does he job. book these corners? I feel like <laughs> he's booking these <laughs> themselves and hey, nobody's this telling us. Lieutenant Governor, so we just have a little conversation. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm saying I thank you for the invite. Like oh. I said, thank you for inviting me to your black job. You know, oh, you know our black and Hispanic job. Because they're Hispanic, Hispanic jobs, job. too. Yeah, yeah, black and Hispanic job. You know, I'm still waiting on, because that came from the people, some people didn't see that moment, but at the debate. If there was one moment, when talking about about, when asked about black voters, uh, Donald Trump made it about immigration and immigrants taking the black jobs and the Hispanic jobs. I don't know what those jobs are. Well, well, which Unless, we always knew he was going to do, which is to try to use immigration as a wedge issue with black voters. Consistently. So are they it was taking just, lawyers and bankers jobs? I don't understand what, they, uh, what, what he was talking about. Which are, I, am I at a black job yeah, right now? Well, you're at a black job, but it's also just like Eric Hovde in Wisconsin, who, when asked if he knows black people, said that he's been to Africa before. Oh, and he, oh also, okay. he, he said he's been to Africa, and he said he's okay. opened up homeless shelters. Eric Hovde's running for the there Senate. You go, there we can, go. Can we back up and talk about the debate. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the debate. We, we, we're going to talk about Donald Trump. I would like to talk about the president. How did you think he did? Well, look, you know, remember Barack Obama didn't have the greatest debate with Mitt Romney the first go around. And look, we know that we weren't tuning into an episode of Saved by the Bell. But the fact is, we went into this debate and we saw a debate performance that does not match the presidential performance. We had four years of chaos under Donald Trump. We all know that. It will be another four years of unmitigated chaos if he is reelected. But but we've also had four years of the most productive presidency, at least of my lifetime, if ever. So, look, I get it. A lot of people were stressed out and frustrated by were what you? they saw. Was I? Honestly, yes. But I have seen what the uh, Joe Biden presidency has delivered for the American people, and I'm okay with that. People's debate performance don't always equate to a great performance as a governing official. The New York Times um, and other editorial uh, headlines are screaming for the president to bow out of the race. I, I think that's a little bit ignorant at this point um, because the political realities will not dictate that scenario. It, and if it did, it's not going to be a good one for the for the Democrats. Um, but how how do you think the the president should recover? You have, for example, the Washington Post noting. Uh, Biden spoke in a stronger, steadier voice than the faint, raspy tone that had unnerved his, even his allies during the debate. And applause swelled in the Raleigh crowd that seemed to intent on reassuring him when he acknowledged that he is no longer a younger man. One of the things I said the night, the night of the debate, uh, which I thought was important, was at a moment like this, you lean into it. Mm -hmm. You don't back away from it. So the president the next day goes out and leans into it, says, I don't walk the way I used to walk. I'm not the same person. But I am the leader you need in this moment. Will that narrative sort of correct the storyline that came out of this debate, you think? Well, I think it will, because think about some of the ads that the president has run, where he's acknowledged his age. He understands he's not some spring chicken running for president. But let's also talk about Donald Trump. Like, this man is saying whatever. He has been doing this long before the debate stage uh, just a couple nights ago. Uh, so the president, his team, do have a chance to rebound. I think they will. They demonstrated an ability to do so in North Carolina. And as you mentioned, leaning into it and leveling with the American people is something that Joe Biden has always done, and I look forward to seeing him doing that. Let's take a listen to something the president had to say during that speech in North Carolina. Donald Trump is a genuine threat to this nation. He's a threat to our freedom. He's a threat to our democracy. He's literally a threat for everything America stands for. Three times Trump was asked last night by the moderators, would he respect the election results if he lost this time? Three times he refused to answer. Three times. Folks, Donald Trump refused to accept the results in 2020. We all saw what happened on January the 6th. I think in general we've talked a lot about the president's debate performance as it related to just sort of his style and the way that he came across. But there was also an opportunity cost, right, which was there was an opportunity there or there should have been an opportunity to prosecute the case against Donald Trump when he started spewing lies, when he started talking about January 6th. And to do it in real times, understanding that given the confines of that debate, that wasn't going to fall to the moderators. That, to me, seems like a big piece of what got lost. Well, it was a huge piece of what got lost. but. 
as we're talking about this now, people understand that the former president has continued to subvert the rule of law and will continue to do so. And not only will we see uh, Donald Trump march into the White House if he wins in November, he's bringing all the January 6th people with him mm -hmm. once again. And that's just scared the hell out of everybody in this country. So, so I, I, it was interesting, and I wanted to get, since we've got the lieutenant governor <laughs> here as well, I thought it was very interesting, Val Demings mm -hmm. put out a tweet. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Put out a tweet, and she said, when Donald Trump was found liable for sexual assault and 34 felony counts, I did not see one Republican panic. If they can rally around their criminal figurehead, surely Democrats can rally around our democracy and a good man working to protect it. That's President Biden. That, to me, sort of sums up the whole game in this uh, mm -hmm. debate narrative. The instant panic to push Biden aside because uh, he didn't sound right or he looked frail. And standing next to him was a guy that Republicans not only have rallied around, but lifted his behind up over their heads as a demigod <laughs> And said, "This is us." And he, and to be clear, Donald Trump sounded quite incoherent at exactly. that debate, and, and he said some crazy things. And they pushed reasonable people aside, you know, reasonable in the context of Republicans these days. But they have pushed reasonable people aside to make a path for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So they have embraced this maniac who has lied to the American people. Will continue to do so, and we have an opportunity to continue four years of honestly this country moving in the right direction and improving upon you know the areas where Donald Why Trump. Why do people like that part? So I think that that's, I'm sorry, but I just no. I mean, you you no. I'm you just gonna say, but you make a very good point that oh, we everything we see and know, yet and still, American people sitting there going, yeah, I could get a piece of that. I, yeah. I don't I don't understand what it is if about you, Trump about Trump that people will look past all of his crap. I mean, I do think that if you watch, he employed a rhetorical device during that debate where he stringed together so many lies that it was impossible Possible. to catch yeah. them yeah. and it was impossible yeah. to fact check him. And then it means it's just a, a, a deluge. Yeah. And then how are you supposed to actually sort through what it is that he's saying? It's, it's like one of those DDoS attacks where, you know, you know websites get hacked. You just, yeah. you just, you just keep, you just keep, keep, you know, just keep sending stuff over and you just overwhelm the system. And that's what he's doing. And that's what he's doing with our democracy. I mean, I will just say at the debate, some of the things that Donald Trump said, yes, they were. I mean, he had a, he packed a lot in one in in one answer, a lot of lies, um, and a lot of just again, I, what are the black jobs? I think that, and he repeated it again last night in Virginia. We, he needs to answer the question: What are black and Hispanic jobs? But then also, what he said about abortion, yes. saying the same thing that the president of the Heritage Foundation yes. said when he was sitting here about that Democrats are supporting abortion three days after the baby is born or right up until nine months. That is not happening, and it's I think that murder. those were yeah. easy. <laughs> options there. But to Michael's point about um, how uh, the D Democrats panicked, I do think it is worth noting that what we saw were elected officials, um, party mm -hmm. individuals, you know, strategists, not people that work for the president, but people outside yeah. of the apparatus. Yeah. And the elected officials, you know, they're on the ballot this cycle. And so I think their panic is a little, and I know we have uh, Congressman Garcia that's coming up later, but I think that their panic is related to what this means for the ballot. Because you've got um, Senate candidates and congressional candidates running five, ten points ahead of the president in their states. And they wanted to see him talk more about the future. Now, I think that rally in North Carolina hit that mark. Yeah. And if that is the Joe Biden folks see going forward, I think that the panic will subside. But if I was the Biden people, I'd be keeping a list, honey, because it was way too many, people, way too many people ready, to, ready to jump, ready to jump if you bucks. At, I mean, just instantly running their mouths. So it wasn't even, let's take a pause, yep. a beat, and figure out what's going on. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so well, my advice is do some calisthenics before every campaign event. Get the blood flowing. <laughs> get the mind going. And be ready for whatever. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Governor, former Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes, thank you so much for getting us started and coming in this morning. Thank you so much. As we said, Congressman Robert Garcia, who was in Atlanta Thursday, he joins us at the table to talk about the first presidential debate, what comes later, and later in the hour, Biden's strategy. Just Anita Dunn on the president's run for re-election. You are watching The Weekend.